it's not the number of connections that matters most. It's the depth of those connections. That's what VR and AR will be able to do better than anything that has come before. That's why Facebook is so committed to this work. VR is often depicted as isolationist or escapist. And that dystopian future is a real possibility if we don't put people first, if we don't put human connection first. Today, the focus may be more on content, and that's great. But in the fullness of time, I expect virtual reality to be a platform primarily centered around human connection. Looking five or 10 years down the road, this could have really profound impacts on the fabric of society. Not only would people be able to connect with the people that matter most to them in real life because they're commuting less, but this would also enable access to jobs to those who today have limited opportunity due to geography. This potential to transform the global landscape is incredible, and it's the reason that we're prioritizing the investments to deliver this technology in a human-centric way. You're all already familiar with Oculus Rift, which has been powering great VR experiences uh, for, with PCs for years now. Earlier this year, we announced Oculus Go, which is focused on entertainment and social use cases and is by far the most affordable way to get into virtual reality. And as you've just heard Mark announce, we are excited next year to launch Oculus Quest. But you're not stopping there. We're also going to work on future technology that will unlock even more. Instead of taking the real world and overlaying virtual objects on top of it, like we plan to do with augmented reality, you can also take real world objects and integrate them into virtual reality so that everything can interact. This is super important for unlocking future use cases like reimagining how we collaborate at work. What you're about to see is actual footage from a prototype of mixed reality shot with the Oculus Quest. So as I put my headset on, we can see the virtual world uh, overlaid on a very, very crude reconstruction of the real world behind it. And here I'm watching a video of my son and I playing with iron powder and a birthday candle for Science Saturday when I get a notification that my wife sent me some photos on Messenger. And I can go in and browse and pick out a few favorites before it's time to get back to work. The top of my to-do list is to work on my OC5 script, so I better get to it. You can see that I'm able to access my real-life keyboard and desk in front of me while enjoying the boundless space that virtual reality affords me. And then I get a notification that tells me I've got a meeting. My speech will have to wait. I make my way into a virtual room somewhere in the metaverse that allows me to work alongside my team in a persistent environment. Someday there will be people in here, lots of people, imagine it. <laughs> and here comes my colleague now. Now this is a, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume that applause is for how cute my kids are, so I just. This is a very early concept, uh, but the ideas are starting to take shape. Being able to connect with people both physically proximate to you and physically distant at the same time has the potential to tremendously broaden our capacity to connect with other people, especially if you can have access to all of your information without constantly having to check your phone. Mixed reality won't be ready for a while, but it is on our roadmap. We think it's a huge part of the next five years of virtual reality and an important step on the path to augmented reality.